So, it is May 28, 2018, two killed as Alberto makes landfall on Florida Panhandle. Wow. Yeah, all right. Two people were killed as subtropical storm Alberto strong surf, powerful wind gusts, and heavy rain tore across the Gulf of Mexico coast and swamped the southeast. Sounds like two people were killed by Alberto in maybe the panhandle, Florida's panhandle. I don't know. Oh, I do know. Polk County, North Carolina. State trooper. Rico Stevens said two people were killed when a tree fell on a vehicle that belonged to NBC affiliate WYFF of Greenville, South Carolina. Doesn't this sound like two were killed by Alberto as it made landfall in the panhandle? This is how mainstream media writes its articles now. It's hit a new low. Uh, this, this is reprehensible. In North Carolina, a tree fell. Okay, North Carolina has been having steady rain for about 10 days, two weeks, having heard from several of you who live in North Carolina. This was not due to Alberto. We got some rain from that manufactured storm today. But due to the rain that has been going on in North Carolina, the tree could have fallen from a little bit of wind because the trees have been so weakened from the aerosol spraying, the geoengineering. But this fear-mongering of mainstream media, forecasters warned of life-threatening surf conditions and the possibility of a few brief tornadoes in much of Florida and parts of Georgia, South Carolina, and Alabama. Um, well, we had some rain here in South Carolina. I've been posting on Alberta. I couldn't even tell where Alberta was. Was it the entire scattered shower that we were looking at? Oh, the overall ragged appearance of Alberta because it was not a tropical storm. So now they're saying the overall ragged appearance. I don't even know if it's true that Cuba got a foot of rain, that 20,000 people were evacuated. Across the Gulf Coast, residents were bracing for their own misery. Panama City resident Joan Newton, she was filling up sandbags to hopefully keep the water from coming in her front door. I'm actually terrified of the amount of rain that is predicted to come in. Okay, I'm going to read some of the comments that I got on my video last night. But this this was posted today. And I'm reading the same thing that I read into a video yesterday about Alberta with Governor Rick Scott. Now he's saying the storm is unpredictable. Well, considering that we have now a uh, military grade radar in which they can detect storms and and forecast predictably why is it unpredictable it's unpredictable because perhaps man and his technology tried to create a tropical storm and they failed but they kept trying. I don't know. But here again, Florida, state of emergency in 67 counties, 5,000 National Guard members ready to be deployed if needed. 
last night's article was about the thousands evacuated in the Panhandle in uh, I believe Thomas County was it or Franklin County all right the comments that I got underneath these uh, and underneath this video and I appreciate all who let me know what was going on especially in Florida what what were the comments Deltona sporadic rain is there a Kismi Kismi Florida not sure if I'm pronouncing that right they said no rain Punta Gorda this was coming from a subscriber who lives in Richmond Virginia but used to live in Punta Gorda he was talking to a friend who said light rain Richmond Virginia he or she said no rain Jacksonville scattered showers someone from West Florida and I'm guessing the panhandle said lots of rain and flooding that was the only only person who uh, said lots of rain and flooding state St. Lucie County hardly any rain joking about this tropical storm all weekend Plant City Florida scattered showers Daytona Beach few showers worse last week rained every day for 10 days last week uh, very minor in my area and uh, they didn't leave the area North Florida little rain is there a Havana Florida well if there is no rain maybe they meant Miami Miami someone left a comment saying constant rain for three weeks rained yesterday power outages well that was a subscriber who was in Long Island who had spoken to a friend I guess in Miami um, Thomas County Georgia was very rainy heavy at times Tampa Bay normal rain small wind another one in Tampa hardly rained Tallahassee sprinkled rain all day at night no rain Space Coast on east side got some rain little wind South Florida lots of rain last week Sunday yesterday it was nice with scattered showers this morning they said it looks nice it's gonna be a nice day Macon Georgia little rain North Carolina lots of rain so I still don't know what's going on and I think you know NBC may have may have posted this wanting everybody to believe that Alberto was horrible oh my god two died but in North Carolina Wow, the flash flooding was bad in Baltimore. In, um, oh God, I forgot the name of the, the city. Look at this. Jesus. There's videos. I'll, I'll link to this and you can watch it. Look at this. Well, I showed the ultra low frequencies being used. The harp rings. Well, you can watch the videos. Tornadoes, Wyoming. So, I post this video last night showing you the harp rings and the ultra low frequencies at use in Wyoming and they had tornadoes in Laramie County and I got a comment from a subscriber who lives in Wyoming has for 30 years and drove into federal Wyoming and saw 
all of these emergency vehicles and cop cars and Federal was one of the towns where these tornadoes came down and I think two families lost their homes. I can't play these videos. These are storm chasing people and well they chase their videos and give you copyright strikes. Look at this sky. This is what the sky looks like here in South Carolina, manufactured cloud. And in one of these storm chasing videos, I think it's this one, you hear the storm chaser say, what is that? Looking at the sky, what is that? Well, this, the sky can become very freaky when it's man and his technology creating all of these storms. So I will link below to uh, this video which remember 2011? Construction that we're seeing uh, in Alabama, Mississippi, and other parts of the South. Now seeing some reports in Virginia. We start with breaking news. The death toll jumping again in the past hour in total. 173 people in America now dead from these storms in what could be the worst tornado outbreak in U.S. history. Yeah, okay, well, um, two days before predictions made based on many large harp rings. So there are some people who are telling me that I'm misleading people. They're not harp rings. They're neck thread rings. All right. In 2011, there was an awful lot going on on YouTube due to the weather events that were taking place and the tornadoes. 153? No, I believe it was like 350 or more died from all of these tornadoes that were being set loose and Dutch since was predicting these tornadoes and he was predicting that there would be um, and I'm looking for that little where is it I can't find it um, based on the harp rings and saying like within 48 hours. Oh, I went too far, sorry. Don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm tired. He was predicting it based on what he was seeing, the scale of squares and the harp rings. And these are the concentric rings that I have been showing you. Canada, your first heat wave. You have so many ultra low frequencies being emitted. Quebec, Ontario, Montreal, all over Canada. Ultra low frequencies. They can increase the temperature of the atmosphere. So I will link below to these predictions made from the harp rings, some videos. Um, here's more videos and interesting because some people are writing that these harp rings, that's the radar sweep and you know, you can come across websites like this. Lake Erie, WX, Marine Weather Education and Forecasting Resources. You'll always find information where they will give you an explanation as to why you see these concentric rings. These were not seen before, now we're seeing them. And we see them when they are using Doppler radar or ultra low frequencies, the antenna arrays, 
or HARP or HARP facilities when they are shooting enormous amounts of energy into the ionosphere and enormous amounts of energy comes back and causes a lot of damage. So for those who still are unaware of their confirmation bias in their head, they will they will search out information that proves that man cannot control weather. And then they say, see, it's unfortunate because so much is going on. So many people are suffering these weather events. So Dutch Sense also had posted on the earthquakes, a swarm of earthquakes right down here in California. And I have posted many videos showing you all of the ultra low frequencies being emitted in this area. And just recently, there was an awful lot being emitted right here in Northern California. Ultra low frequencies can cause earthquakes. Small Canadian town is being rocked by mystery earthquakes. This was back in April. Back in April. Over 30 days, 22 earthquakes were recorded in the Maritime Province, which is close to the main border. How many videos have I posted with these ultra low frequencies being set off in Maine and right around that area up in Canada? Very loud bang, and it wakes you up in the middle of the night, these earthquakes. So, it's a mystery. They can't figure out why these earthquakes are happening and they had to come up with some explanation as to why they're hearing large bangs before the earthquake. The beams crossing these ultra low frequencies when they cross they can actually make a very loud bang. It says Homologists told the CBC that there is no real reason for why they're occurring. This area seems to have swarms of events that occur. They turn on, turn off, can be quiet for years. Six, uh, in 2016, the town was rocked with more severe earthquakes at a higher frequency, more than 100. Then as now, there was no explanation given for the quakes. Do I need to post more videos on all of the ultra low frequencies that I've been seeing up here in Canada? And I can't do it, but I have recorded many. And this is just one file that I have. One file folder. Yeah. So, Doppler radar stations. Wow, we've got a lot of them. Yep, here's the Greer Doppler radar station in South Carolina. Spartanburg. Well, maybe that's Columbia. This is the Little River ultra low frequency that I showed in one of my Alberto uh, videos. Doppler radar. Depending on the frequency, depending on the wattage, they have mini harp stations. If you want to take a look at this, uh, to understand a little bit about Doppler radar. It's unfortunate that so many people think that what they research, I guess, first and find out, that's it. That's the method of weather modification. There are so many methods. And these ultra-low frequencies, they don't only come from Doppler radar. They can also come from those radar stations that I showed you in one of my videos. 
Um, you can watch Weather Warfare, Chemtrails Confirmed by History Channel. <sighs> yeah, I'm tired of this, guys. Should I go through weather as a force multiplier owning the weather in 2025 where they're talking about owning the weather, the United States military, the Air Force and Navy, and this paper is to outline a strategy for the use of future weather modification to influence clouds, precipitation, storm, intensity, climate, space, fog, opportunities for space weather modification, artificial weather to produce some weather effects artificially and how the military was so excited how nanotechnology also offers possibilities for creating simulated weather a cloud or several clouds of microscopic computer particles all communicating with each other with a larger control system could provide tremendous capability well they've got it They've got this capability. I mean, in 1957, they had a President's Advisory Committee on Weather Control. They recognized the military potential. And in this document, it says weather modification, more important weapon than the atom bomb. More important than the atom bomb. More destructive. Spoofing options. Yeah, they can fool you. They can fool you. It would allow the military to mask or disguise our weather modification activities. And they don't even disguise it anymore. Mountains of evidence. You got the satellite showing all of the aerosol spraying. You got radar showing the scalar squares, the harp rings and X-ray rings, the ultra low frequencies. Then you got the documents that go along with proving, oh, these ultra low frequencies, yeah, used for earthquakes and cyclones and steering the jet stream. And, but it doesn't matter because the condition of most Americans, they're little kids, they want to play, they don't care. The tools exist today, but we need to develop and refine them in the future. Weather modification, increase latent heat release in the atmosphere. Oh, heat waves. Provide additional water vapor for cloud cell development and provide additional surface and lower atmospheric heating to increase atmospheric instability. Yes, shooting shooting like high powered high frequency microwaves into the ionosphere causes instability and with those instabilities well there's no telling what you can get and if you read more and more documents and do the research you'll find that once they get those instabilities well they have to control those instabilities and well, sometimes those instabilities are a little bit hard to control. And things don't work out the way they planned. They can induce lightning. They can increase the potential and intensity of lightning. They can increase the basic efficiency of the thunderstorm. They can trigger lightning. All they need is a weather modification system, energy, chemicals, meteorological processes in the right way, at the right place, at time, and time. It's the intervention. They can influence clouds and precipitation and storm intensity and climate, space, and fog. What are we going to do? I guess we're just going to watch all of this destruction. Modifying the ionosphere. If they're modifying the ionosphere, clearly that is going to have ramifications. 
in the atmosphere. They have successfully demonstrated experimentally on the upper atmosphere many techniques. Ground-based modification techniques employed. Vertical high frequency heating. Oblique high frequency heating. Microwave heating. Magnetosphere modification. The military applications of such operations is just great. They can create an artificial ionosphere. Plasma. If we have an EMP attack and our grid goes down, the military will have their own grid. They can instantly create plasma. And voila, they have their own Wi-Fi from the energy. Weather modification. New technology to enhance rainfall and thunderstorms. Clouds generate cirrus clouds. What is that new technology? Carbon black dust. All that black crap that you see. It can enhance rainfall. Generate cirrus clouds. Enhance thunderstorm clouds in otherwise dry areas. And how are they going to get you to accept all of this? Well, they're going to bring about a lot of natural disasters. Of course, they're man-made. That's the artificial weather. But you think it's natural. And it's going to be so extreme that finally you're going to say, bring it on, please, please. We need you with your technology to modify this weather. Now, all the people who have not believed us, when it's, when the announcement is made, we can modify that weather. Will any of them turn and look at you and say, Jesus, I'm so sorry. I guess they could modify the weather. No, they won't even think of it. They'll just be happy to have their weather controlled because, oh God, climate change just brought it so out of control. This is what we're living. So this was the time period. Now, now what can they do? Let's see, AW, artificial weather, now. Ah, and they will be doing it more and more and more. More and more and more. Let's see, storm modification, now. And they'll be doing it more. What's PM, precipitation modification? Doing it right up to 2018, and they're going to be doing it more. <sighs> Space weather modification and fog and cloud modification. Mwah. They won't be needing to do that much anymore. How th this is their ingredients, smart clouds, directed energy, carbon black dust, weather force, support element, virtual weather, global weather network, computer, computer modeling, communications, chemicals, and aerospace delivery vehicles. It's right here. It's the roadmap to the weather modification that they're already doing. They don't, they're, they were so successful that they didn't have to wait for 2025. So what could they already do? And this was back in 1996 or 7. They could precipitate they could enhance precipitation or they could uh, deny precipitation. They could enhance storms, modify storms, deny fresh water induce drought, disrupt communications. Yeah, they can bring about an EMP, fog and cloud removal. They can deny concealment, 
or they can increase concealment. Here's their network. Ah, satellites and an ultra low frequency transmitter, I'm not sure, with their computer modeling. And yeah, they can bounce these things all over the world. The military system for weather modification operations. One, they need intent. Two, they need weather modification options. Three, they need a decision. Four, employ their weather modification tools. And five, cause and effect. They can create ionospheric reflecting layers, mirrors, So, yes, they can suppress or intensify weather patterns, create new weather patterns, alter global climate on a long-lasting scale, creation of completely new weather, suppression or intensification. Made to order weather. This is still the military document. Made to order weather. And yes, weather, artificial weather, weather modification, there will be civil applications that will have obvious military implications. Civil applications means weather modification applied here in the United States. And Hurricane Harvey, Tropical Storm, Alberta, all of these destructive weather events. Who do we see? The Army, the National Guard. That's the military implication. Rick Scott, I've got 5,000 National Guard ready to be deployed. Applied weather modification during Vietnam War. Research conducted for decades. Foundation already exists. Weather modification a part of national security policy with domestic and international implications. Deliberate weather modification actions appear to be the consequence of natural weather phenomena. And it's inexpensive. Well, that's it, folks.